Hey, welcome back to another HD podcast. My name is Creative. With me always is High Desert THC. What up, what up, everybody? Welcome back to another show. Oh, dude, I love that intro. It's one of my favorite ones. <laughs> it's an old but goody. Are you going to introduce our guest? Yeah, yeah. Uh, welcome to the show. We have uh, Alex, uh, Queen of the Sun Grown with us tonight. How you doing, Alex? I'm good. I was going to say, I do like that intro, too. That was cool. Nice job. Yeah, that, was, that was my first editing a year ago that I did, so I just kept it up. That was our okay. very first one. That was, Dude, that was fucking editing is a pain in the ass, so kudos <laughs> to you, man. Editing uh, sucks. Also, that where was- are you from? I really like your accent. I have a thing. It's like Southern, huh? Somewhere. Me? Creative. Yeah. What's oh, your accent? Yeah. So I'm from the Midwest. <laughs> originally oh, okay so and then i was just living in texas for some years so i kind of picked up more and more of the southern dialect <laughs> all right yeah <laughs> i live here in arizona cool. with with high desert cool I always point the wrong way every time <laughs> <laughs> yeah there we go i can point up though that <laughs> well so we're... go ahead i was just gonna say we're glad to have you tonight alex uh you, you're full of knowledge, and I'm sure we're going to dig into a lot of that with you. Um, yeah, I want to share the screen real quick. Uh, I'm sure everybody is familiar. If you're not familiar, then you, sh- you will be today. Queen of Sunbrown is a teacher also. Like, she yep. really gets down, and uh, she has a website. Um, what do you? What's the main thing that you point people towards on your website, your classes, or yeah probably it? classes i mean i don't i'm uh you know i got it all going on the classes right now i'm actually running a 420 sale so 42 percent off i mean these classes are like 55 bucks so 42 percent off is like 30 something dollars that's like less than a gram of rosin y'all so wow, <laughs> wow. so it's off yeah. right now though too this was so yeah um there i love it i did i spent all of last year like it was kind of overwhelming because i did i was like i'm gonna do a new class every month and holy shit like three hours of instruction articles recipes ebooks like all for this one day it was like so much pressure and i'm so happy it's done but now they're up there and you got a whole year of classes recorded and available and a fucking shitload of work so um oh yeah dang new episodes every saturday oh yeah dropped a new podcast that so that's my new thing so last year was classes this year's the new podcast we launched a citizen science project and humboldt seed company is sponsoring it so we are all growing and tomorrow's the last day to sign up like i'm closing it because we can't have it we don't have enough you know seeds the triploids keep selling out so um Everyone is growing. It was the OG Kush triploid. Oh my God. And Ben told me that's the owner of Humble like three days ago. Oh, small change. We're going to be doing the donuts triploid instead. <laughs> I like did a whole episode on OG Kush already. And I was like, okay, this is great. <laughs> I would rather grow the donuts anyway. <laughs> hey, uh, Humble, Humble has so much stuff. It's wild when people start pulling packs out, how many different names they got. It's just wild. They've been putting yeah. in work for so long. It's not even funny. Yeah, like so since then, 2001. Fucking yeah, great, great. Yeah, players. and the amount of people that they got working with them and the amount of farms that they got that they work with, too, is you can't even understand how big they really are. They're really big. Yeah, But it's a small team, though. It's like a really small, close-knit, family-run business. So I love it. They support the legacy growers. They're true to it. They're not new to it. You know what I'm saying? Lyrical miracle right there. They are amazing people. And I'm just so stoked for them to have, you know, sponsored this. And so everyone's getting the seeds who signs up for Blaze. And we're growing um, the same strain outdoors. Has to be outdoors. Uh obviously um and then (laughs) uh collecting data to see how these different photo periods um 
do in every single hardiness zone across America. So right now we don't have like this data set. Like, you know, when you buy a pack of veggies or flowers, like it'll say like, oh, plant outside in April for zone 6B. But outdoor growers don't have any of that information for cannabis. And every strain mm. is different in different photo period regions and latitudes and zones. So this is like we're trying to collect this data so that we can create an online tool where you can type in your strain and your zip code and hey, yo, this is the best time to grow it out. Start it outside, yep. you know, just tips and tricks. And I'm I'm stoked. We're gonna get seedsmen on board next year in Europe. It's like fucking a lot of fucking work and I'm just doing this for the love of it. So sign up for my Patreon and support the cause and sign up for Blaze. You'll get the free seeds and you know. Oh yeah. Where do I grab the, is a Patreon uh what's the easiest <laughs> way to get to it from your website? Uh, I think it says like membership at the top of my okay. website. Maybe you know I'm not the I have a amazing um Oh, about maybe God, geez, it's not even up there. I don't know, man. I'm sorry. Patreon.com slash queen of the sun girl. And I'm going to talk, talk to cat lady and see what, if we can get that on the, on the website, maybe on blaze. It's probably here. Hey, look, I just hit this right before everyone came on. <laughs> and I, just landed. I don't even know how I'm up here talking. Patreon.com slash queen of the sun girl. Yes. There hey. we go. I'm not tech savvy. I'm like, I have an amazing right hand woman who helps me with website and podcasting and editing. And I, I have no patience for computers. I'm like, if this doesn't work, throwing it against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, it's, 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 there's becoming a big gap too in being able to utilize technology uh, very well too. It's getting crazy, man. Yep. I'm just trying to catch up, and I don't think I'll ever catch up, honestly. And things are always <laughs> changing all the time, too. Oh, yeah. yeah I mean, AI. AI. Exactly. you just now getting it. We both said the same time. You're just, <laughs> just now starting to learn stuff, and they're like, hold on. AI is about to switch everything up. Right. Oh, I love AI. It's so convenient for editing because I don't have patience. So it's like, oh, long form video. Give me 30 second videos that I can throw on Instagram. Hell yeah. Do it. Um, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. We yeah, got to do it all, you know, as business owners, we got to not only are we growing good, we teaching people, creating the content, putting it out there. It's like accounting, tech, gardening. I mean, it's a it's great for the ADHD mind. Right. Shout out to my neurodivergence. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely. ADHD brain. I got to smoke weed to focus. And then sometimes <laughs> I smoke weed in a hyper focus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. yeah multiple personnel multiple uh things going on all at the same time <laughs> always always got to be juggling 50 million things i wouldn't life would be boring without it right right yeah definitely so um all right getting into your classes say if somebody never doesn't get into your classes i know you've talked a little bit about some of the things that you guys do when you're saying holistic you mean like this is just like everything you're like deep into agronomy and everything right yeah okay. i think that the holistic approach okay so i did some schooling like i have a, a formal education in environmental science natural science but then i kind of like went off to sustainable agriculture did a master gardener program through uc davis and then holistic management international or institute it's like alan savory he's a desert ecologist and basically um teaching farm management holistically where you look at the big picture of what are your resources who is your management team um what kind of terroir do you have what's your soil like what tools do you have how efficient is your space do you have a lot of waste could you be touching things less it's like this whole um creating a farm plan or life plan really um with like what's your true north what's your goals and then directing every decision you make on your farm to towards that so like so many people will teach you how to grow weed their way but the most important person in this is you the gardener so like 
tweaking things specific to your farm, your lifestyle, your amount of time. That's like all my classes are like, how do we figure out what's best for you, man? Because I am crazy. I'm going to grow how I'm going to grow, but you should grow <laughs> how you're going to grow, you know? Yeah. It sounds like me. Like, I'm like, yeah, I, I honestly like to hear when you tell me what to do, but I'm not, I, I like doing it my way sometimes too, you know? Sometimes oh, yeah. you get cornered yeah. into a way of doing things and people are like, you could do it this way. And you're like, but I like, I, I actually enjoy the process of doing it this way though. Exactly. <laughs> My husband loves hand watering and I'm like, fuck that. Give me That's some me drip right tape. And <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I do not know. I'll I'll do my teas and foliar. He's not about that foliar feeding. And I'm like, let me get my foliar once a week through veg, once a week through flower. I go switch to the bio controls. And so, you know, you got you each have your things in your garden that you like to do. That's like your secret sauce, your special um, influence. And so that's really the most important part when gardening. You want to have fun. If you don't like yeah. can wandering, fucking set up irrigation. Definitely. If you're going along. And you're following somebody else's way all the time, man. It's not, I've done that. And it's like, it, it doesn't get fun anymore, man. You got to experiment yourself and kind of find your niche and thing. It's good to take advice from other people and stuff and apply it towards what you're doing. But just grow your own way, man. But make your own style, man. That's what's awesome about right. it. Drain the Swamp says, uh, I can't get high. Weed sucks nowadays. Uh, brother. Hit me up, man. Yeah, <laughs> Dude, I don't know where you are, but man. Bro, I'm trying to not hit the bong again for a little bit. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like trying not to smoke until midway through the podcast so I could still function all the way through. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I couldn't even find my freaking vape pen. I've been pretty much only on rosin pens and um, edibles. I don't really do a lot of flower nowadays. I'm kind of a lazy stoner where, well, like I have a three-year-old, so I don't want to be ripping a bong or hitting glass. Like I just have my little pen, puff, puff. There we go. I got a puff co for like nighttime and then mm. edibles for like the long, slow and steady through the day. So... So when um, you do the, the pins, you do live rosin with no, uh, mm -hmm. no, um, fake only rosin. Oh yeah. Only rosin from, um, headhunter extract. Yo, he is the best. I'm trying to get him to teach a class with me on bubble hash and rosin. Um, fucking awesome dude. I get them from him and I have like a different flavor for every, you know, Right now, I got Moroccan peaches. I got Amarello. I got Your Breath. I got Cream de Chem. I got Grease Bucket. So I got all of the flavors. And then I also get like rosin from him regular so I can taste it, like compare the rosin, bubble hash rosin to the pen. And it's like the same strains, but in different forms. Taste. And you get to, yeah, exactly. Appreciate oh, yeah. it different ways. Oh, yeah. Which is one of my new passions. I just started washing hash. Um, probably i don't know two months ago and so we're moving in the middle of moving like right now i literally stopped moving to jump on here so thank you guys because i've been moving since like 7 30 this morning um <laughs> well, thank you thank you for taking <laughs> time out of your busy life to come over here and hang with us for dude for i love doing that. this so i was like oh man honey i gotta work I have to, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> right, just have to handle the business. <laughs> but so, I had to wash hash, like, because our freezer was still had fucking a bunch of fresh frozen. And then I'm like, I'm not going to move the fresh frozen to our new spot. So I just got to wash hash. So I did that on his last day off, too, while he was moving. And I was like, OK, I got to I got to wash hash, too. I don't, I don't know. I, I can't. <laughs> Are you, are you, do you press the hash or do you just, uh, do it yep. like that? Hell yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you just, uh, um, pressed the same stuff that you've washed and pressed? What do you mean? Have the you just, stuff? uh, have you taken the, so do, have you taken any products, pressed the flour into rosin and then, uh, have you also made bubble hash and then press that with the same oh product. i've only done bubble hash rosin i haven't done okay. flour rosin um mm. yeah That's i just i'm the i'm she the skipped one step and went straight like to the top i'm the opposite like, of you i've only done rosin but i haven't done bubble hash yeah. rosin 
Oh, I love bubble hash rosin. I love it. So I, I just want that purity. And it's just a beautiful, it's like br making bread. It's like the process, you know, you got to wash it. Then you got to let it dry and cure. Now we're going to sieve it. We're going to press it. It's like a whole, you know, beautiful art. So hopefully oh, Headhunter and me will be doing a class. I've been trying to get him to do a class with me for like a year though. So bug that guy. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. just wild. So then you grow, obviously you're, you don't do, you do any indoor growing. Yeah. Um, but thank God we're moving to a place we can't do indoor cause I'm sick of it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I hate indoor. I'm no offense. I mean, I'll hustle indoor all the day, but I just don't like being in tight confined places. And most indoor rooms are like really cramped and yeah. the fake lighting is like really harsh i hate wearing sunglasses um you know it's just not my i like being outside i'm not yeah, queen of the lights my <laughs> wife is the same way queen my of the LED. The same way she wants to grow but she's like i just can't like do it inside it's not don't feel right to me i'm like i don't know man <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I'm going to turn my tents into mushroom grows in my since my landlord said we couldn't grow weed in the house, we can grow weed outside. But now I can just turn my tents into little mushroom uh like shoebox totes. Looking nice. great. So yeah, you're you are growing exactly. outside. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, you're, you're, you're you are oh, one at a time. Here I go. When you are growing outside, what do you what are you using for like what brand of soil or anything or amendments do you usually go for or do you care? Man, I don't prescribe to that. I don't do, I'm native soil in the ground, baby. Like we want top soil. That's real soil. Potting mix is engineered. That's not soil. That is just peat, cocoa. That's organic fraction. That's just a bunch of stuff that we made and created. And you just have to keep on feeding, keep on remineralizing in the ground that's where all the fucking minerals are that's a savings account i am tapping in and not spending so much money so like whatever i have accessible to me um craigslist facebook marketplace get that free poop get that compost go to the local soil yard grab the best quality compost you can add as much organic matter get the microbes happy get everything cycling and access the nutrients and minerals in the soil you don't have to worry about overwatering, underwatering. You don't got to worry about like container size. You know, it's just, it's just, I love it. No, we, we've had some people on here that grow like that. And we know people that grow like that, like uh house of Frutas. He is in that intro. He, mm -hmm. he doesn't buy soil or nothing. He doesn't buy any of that stuff. He does his own, everything makes it. If he needs something to put in the soil, he's going to make it himself out of something he already has. Like he's just really not, like laid back. I'm not that. I got a kid now, man. I can't make everything. So oh, I yeah. do buy like um, dry amendments and I will supplement occasionally with like, like I usually do once a week teas, nutrient teas. So mm -hmm. it, whether it's like a uh, fish, hydrolysate, yucca, kelp, aloe, fulvic, um, you know, some potions, whatever I'm feeling. And uh, dry amendments like just depends on what you have like, like what you're what you want so like a slow release nitrogen um neem meal is what i use because it has ipm properties as well neem actually slows the reproduction of uh insects so in ayurvedic medicine which is like in india they actually give men neem oil to consume because it slows your sperm and so your pot like insect populations also have that same it's the same property so we can slow down reproduction of things really slow Man. release um, don't be drinking no neem oil <laughs> <laughs> well or if you want to women have to take fucking birth control pills to fuck up their skin oh, yeah. make them gain weight like neem is a much safer alternative to um women's birth control that we've been forced you know it's our responsibility but i'm getting on my feminist horse here so <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah i mean whatever you got like down to earth make some amazing uh dry amendments whatever you can access for yourself whatever your style is like obviously you do you but 
I am going to say for phosphorus, if you are low in phosphorus and you're adding any kind of phosphorus source, please don't use guanos. Look into it. Guanos are unsustainable, even if they're organic. Um, they destroy cave ecosystems, nesting habitat for birds. Wars uh, in countries in South America have been won and fought and lost and death over guanos. Um, it's not a, it's a limited resource. So even though it says organic, like go with a byproduct like rock phosphate, soft rock phosphate is usually what I use. And then I just spoke with, um, the soil doctor yesterday, I did a really good podcast with him and he recommended bone meal, which is a byproduct. So I really like to okay. focus on how we can take waste products and use them, you know, for closing that loop of something that is useful. And you can pretty much find that stuff anywhere if you if you want, right? Like I've seen it at even like Home Depot and stuff. I don't know if it's a good yep. product to get there, but I mean you can always do your research on it. You know? Yeah, definitely. And then who silent one saying rock phosphate takes forever to break down. It does, but that's the amazing thing. We're building our soil up for long-term regeneration, not immediate. If we want to access that, then let's do bacillus megatarium, uh, phosphorus solubilizing bacteria. Let's ensure our mycorrhizal fungal network is there. Um, solubilizing, making sure that it's accessible. Like the hey, more but you're, you're like elevated. There's a lot of, so you're like, you know how there's like levels of understanding you're on a level of understanding that a lot of home growers uh can't understand you know what i mean like you're pretty you're getting deeper into it like no this is good though but i get it how some people some people might poke at you every now and then it's just because they might just have like a basic understanding of i'm gonna grab soil and i'm gonna put these things in it and then that's what yeah. i do every time you know what i mean Definitely. But like, sure. I think that you should always be trying to be better. Yeah. In everything that you do in 100%. life. That's what's so cool about the cannabis community is every community that you get a part of, it seems like slowly, but surely you raise your standards because there's a agreed upon standard that you should meet. Like how much yield should you be getting under a light? Mm -hmm. There's a range. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? How many colas you have in a space is kind of like all these things, how tall your plants getting, you know, all these things. So what I'll do is if I don't, if someone's talking and we're all, we're all there and I'm not on the level someone else is on, I will, if I don't understand something, I'll write it down and I'll go research that and find out what it is. That way I understand what the hell they're talking about. And then you can go back and rewatch what you were listening to and get a better understanding of what the hell's going on. You know? yeah, yeah, definitely. I say read 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 as much as you can so where where was how how did you start your career of learning you know everything organic and the approach that you are like where's some where's some guideposts that people could go to uh to get on your path i have a unique background because i went to school for environmental science and so i started out taking classes in geology in sustainable agriculture in soil science in botany and then taking that and my passion for clean eating like i am a very healthy person i meditate i like exercising every day i like eating only clean food no processed foods it makes me feel like a higher being and so i have super sensitive skin like i can't use perfumes or detergents or like i'm all natural baby give me the cannabis in all forms and so i've been smoking since i was like you know 14. Um, if I'm going to be ingesting something, I probably consume cannabis more than any other one single thing in my life. Right. I mean, like I'm not eating the same food every single day. I'm not wearing, you know what I mean? So why wouldn't I hold the same standard to my cannabis? And then I just have that ADHD mind of that. I always want to know why, 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 why is it working? What's going on here? I need to understand. It annoys the shit out of my husband, but um, that's just, <laughs> you know, it works out though, man. Cause now I get to teach it and my whole life is like all about weed. And I just, you know, get to talk about it on shows with, you know, like you guys, cool people all over the world and it's fucking oh, rad. Yeah. Oh yeah. Really so then cool just thing. the the YouTube is the queen of the sun grown on YouTube, right? Yep. All right. Let me drop the link. Carnivore and fasting. So I, dude, I'm actually thinking about doing the carnivore diet, like all meat diet 
not forever, but just for a while because I've seen results and it just hmm. it blows my mind. It's like the opposite of what everyone else thinks to do. But <laughs> yeah, I feel like moderation, man. I yeah. mean, <laughs> like you should have a really good, like, and ho hopefully if you are doing all of that meat, like it's sustainable meat, right? Because, um, well, you know, I think you eat eggs too and still you'd have to have like fat, right? Yeah, it's like protein, yeah. eggs. You, fat fat you can you, you can eat dairy products, like dairy products and stuff like that too. I think you uh, all meat diet is cutting out basically almost all your carbs, and then you're trying to get your body to do that, and then you're putting in a lot of fat with your proteins. So you're trying to be yeah. like one to one. Yeah, right? but they're 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 not like they're not like the the no. bad fats. They are yeah, they're like the can, fats that you can burn and and, and make. Uh, energy when out. you don't have a lot of carbs if you don't have a lot of carbs in your diet you can burn through fat easier oh, yeah. the carbs clog you up yep, like where you, you get fat <laughs> i mean yeah. i think that think about our weed plants think about how we need carbohydrates in the soil i don't think i think that people eat too much carbohydrates for sure but you That's are sugar. what you eat literally the world is chemistry and those molecules that are let's so, so say the carbon that we're putting into our soil is then growing the alfalfa that is then feeding the cow so there is carbon that's cycling directly from the sun photosynthesis first right so it's all cycling through and every single molecule in the world has a purpose for what it's going to create, whether it's the nitrogen to create protein, right? Amino acids, that is high, high nitrogen, high protein. Well, carbohydrates have their place in your body as well. I mean, it's, it, I would say like cutting it out completely. That's not, you know, it gives you a long lasting, slow energy source. Like, that takes a long time to burn, right? That's why people get fat. But it's there if you're like a long distance runner or you're, you know, like I go for like long ass bike rides. If I didn't eat <laughs> carbohydrates and I only ate a shitload of meat, first Dude, of all, I'd be constipated. I would have to poop, like I, that would be crazy if I ate that much meat. And I would probably be really hungry all the time. So I've heard the opposite though. I heard that it actually will help your your do something to your gut health and all that kind of stuff so there's a yeah, lot of controversy you just have to, some people so some people have a lot of problems with grain and people have mm -hmm. rheumatoid arthritis or a lot of those people who have a problem with grain like bread and stuff like that so then uh sometimes to try to figure out what's wrong with you some people will do stuff like that like if you get on a carnivore diet and you have a lot of inflammation you might find out that you had something in your diet that wasn't giving you inflammation because you switched to a carnivore diet and you start to figure out, bring back things like oh, I'm going to eat rice and see what happens. Oh, I get inflammation again. Okay. So this might be an issue. I can see how you can utilize things, but yeah. man, for sure. And then you have to question, is it the actual grain or is it the way that it was produced? Because most of our grain is sprayed with glyphosate and all mm -hmm. of these different techniques and of has agriculture. Mm -hmm, exactly. I think that's a big thing too. You know, a lot of the stuff grown in in our agriculture today has very minimal nutritional value to it. It's canned foods, stuff like that. Uh, you're actually doing more harm to yourself than eating all natural organic stuff. So that's why I'm like, I'm growing a garden and I won't have any problems eating certain vegetables out of my garden and mm -hmm. doing it all meat. But as far as like, process needs and stuff like that goes a no no and uh, any kind of like sauces they have a lot of salts anything like that bad. when people bad. go full vegetarian and then they get sick i'm always wondering like what plants were you eating <laughs> like the plants made you sick there's something to do with the plants you're eating that made you sick probably yeah. like they had something in them so maybe. what so what do you do like how did you go about that as far as cannabis you just went like i'm gonna how do you how do you decide she stood outside and put her toes in the dirt and stretched out ah. <laughs> <laughs> um so I started dating a salty boy grower and he was, uh, I was taking college chemistry at the time. And so it was really fascinating to learn to grow with salts because I was super interested. I really view the world like 
in chemistry. You know, like some people relate to whatever their discipline is. I think about the way the world interacts as molecules, as positive and negative charges. And so like you're an engineer. Well, just just thinking about like cations and anions and like flushing with calcium. And I was like, oh, you know, that is binding with this. OK, water and salts. And I was like, OK, I kind of understood some of the things that he was saying that he didn't even know why he was doing it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, well, but when you're eating food like I only eat, you know, try all organic, non-GMO, um, hopefully slow food, locally sourced. Like I want to know the farmer that fucking grew that if I can. And why, and I understand that our nutrient density and our food is so lacking because we are using salts, urea, we're using these things where the plant isn't, a, it's in nutrient devoid soils. And so I was thinking, you know, like your plant would be all plants, are stronger, more resilient um, when they have that relationship with microbiology, when they are feeding and cycling nutrients themselves. And then it's also just ecologically more friendly. And so then I was like, well, why am I not, why aren't we just doing this like with so our plants? I got a question. It's not like to challenge you, but like, what's the, so like if you're growing with salts and you, you're basically creating a nutrient uh, what's the difference between a, a synthetic nutrient that's in a plant than an organic nutrient? Are they doing the same thing? And like, um, if you're flushing your plant, like, you know what I mean? You know where I'm coming from with it? Like, how yeah. how is it bad? In chemistry, for you? it's it's not the same. Chemistry is not going on. So you're skipping steps to get ahead. And a lot of the times, the chelating agent is iron EDF EDTA that is solubilizing, chelating the minerals so that they're present in those synthetic salts. And that can accumulate and kill microbiology in your soil. If you're inside, use salts if you want. I don't give a shit. Like, that's you do you, baby. Um, but outside, we have a huge problem with salt application in over-fertilization. Mm -hmm. 100% agree. And I at agree. the wrong time. So applying uh, salt-based nutrients before big rainfalls. And, and most people don't understand nutrient mob mobility. And so then you're seeing nitrogen and water soluble phosphate run off into our waterways. Uh, prior to me growing weed, I volunteered for the League to Save Lake Tahoe. I lived up in Tahoe for 10 years and I would take water samples after a big storm from the drains. And we would take those water samples, take them to a lab and test for soluble salts that came from people's homes, from the road runoff. And that those salts going into the lake impede lake clarity. They reduce oxygen. They cause algal blooms. That causes die-offs. That's why we have the great die-off in the Gulf of Mexico every single year because farmers are over-fertilizing. They're applying it at the wrong time. And it's just running off into our waterways. And so to me, it's more of a principle of I believe that I can do better in my environment. I'm growing in the ground outside. I am not um, the most important person in this ecosystem. Why am I so, uh, that is so egotistical to think that I have a right to pollute and do things that impact the animals, the plants, the things that are already here. So maybe I've just done too much acid and tripped in the forest and thought that happy bicycle day, by the way, um, <laughs> no, <there's laughs> that we're all connected. And like, why no, not? You're perfect, man. It's, we got to have people just like you. We got to have a lot of people that are totally unique and have a perspective because uh, without the uniqueness of perspective, we're going to be fucked in the long run. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because not one person's got it right ever. We all yeah. take a group situation, you know what I mean? There's many times in your life, I'm sure you've been corrected by people that knew something a little bit along your path, a little better than you as you were going, and it gets you where you're at. Like, so you're important, and somebody might not agree with you because they might grow like with Athena, and that's all they do indoors or something. But uh, oh, they're man. important in their own way, too, to the people that they're important to with their ideas. That's oh, why definitely. growing is so cool because, uh, there literally is a lot of people who are totally different than each other. And then they don't like talk shit to each other and they try to be inclusive. And it's kind of like being in two different religions and being able to hang out in the same space. It's very mm -hmm. cool. Um, but some people aren't like that. Some people are pretty 
standoffish, you know what I mean? Which is <laughs> yeah. fine. Oh, yeah. I get it because it was hard through legalization, right? Very difficult. And you're, it's hard to ever talk to anybody. You never had friends growing up in what you're doing. So then all of a sudden you got all these people around and you forgot how to tell people stuff, you know, because you ain't done it. Never. So some people are in that situation. So it's good that you're sharing uh, because a lot of people who are new growers aren't learning anything organic. They're growing uh, instantly going into salts or instantly getting some soil in a bag and then throwing salts on top of that. Yeah. That seems like the norm. Unfortunately, Yeah. I never understood that. Like, why would you, <laughs> why would you put salts? I get it. It's kind of lazy way to do it. And then I, I think just people don't understand like what they're doing. And they're like, I think I need to feed my plant. But they're not understanding like that there's a better way to feed your plant soil than dumping salts on there. You're going to probably end up with more problems than, <laughs> than you want to like that way. But so what, I what really over loving plants is a huge thing. Like just over fertilization mm. in general, organic or salts. I see that for both. Yeah. It's over loving. It definitely is over loving. People always want to overfeed their, their nutrients. Like, Literally, I promise you could go at half the rate of the record. You could be talking to the person that made the nutrient line and they could be like, bro, it's got to be at this. And you can feed under half and you're going to get great results. Great results. Oh, yeah. I always say 50 to 75 percent the recommended dosage. And if you're doing multiple steps, definitely less like because, you know, people like, oh, I got to do this. And then I'm oh, but this is the secret stuff. And then I'm like, well, are you reading what the ingredients are? Because. I've consulted on tons of commercial farms and I go through their, their nutrients and I'm like, okay, look at this. You just have four products with the same ingredient. So that's a shitload of potassium that you're throwing in there. That means you're taking up cation exchange sites. That means that your cations, other cations are going to have a difficult time. And so you see people won't maybe not see a toxicity, but then they start seeing deficiencies in other nutrients and yeah. typically the micronutrients. Yeah. And then they think, oh, I need to apply more. And then it just causes more problems, more problems because they're not looking at, hey, no potassium, high potassium could be locking out my magnesium or my calcium. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, they don't understand how things work together. I, you know? I use the PK to test all my plants from seed. So I give them PK a week before I flip and I feed them the max dose every time I'm feeding them before I flip them. And then as they go into flower, I'm just feeding them PK and they will, if they're sexually unstable, they're going to show it really bad, <laughs> really bad. It's so funny. But, uh, so the EDTA, uh, uh, the chelation using iron EDTA, what is it about EDTA? The plants can uptake it, right. And they hold it in, but it's not natural, right? Yeah. And so that is, from my understanding, what is um, causing harm to the microbiome in the soil. And so there really isn't, hor and that's in such small amounts that it's like, really, if you want to use salts in your growth, that's fine. If you see something that you want, um, like instantly, your, your plants look hungry. But I, I actually just learned this right, you know, like yesterday, actually, that see you always should be learning mm -hmm. um so urea is the instant form of nitrogen that conventional farmers will use that's the salt base that we're that is like very very accessible but amino acid is the organic form of nitrogen and it's actually even more accessible to plants immediate uptake right away so if you it's actually your plant is going to take it up it's going to be easier it's going to be better quicker faster so it's like just making the so informed decision is that the difference between like a nitrate like so you nitrates nitrate and ammonium are different nitrates okay, and yeah. ammonium are different forms of um nitrogen and i think urea is one of them i'm not sure what urea is i don't use urea or salts really but amino acid is then the carbon-based form of nitrogen Okay. And that's what, isn't that what a lot of people talk about too? Um, the difference between, you know, synthetic um, stuff and, and organic is organic has a longer carbon chain attached to everything, has more carbon mm -hmm. in general, right? So then oh, you yeah. can have like a synthetic bottle and the amount of carbon total would be less uh, attached to the same ingredients. Definitely. All right. So that's one thing that I was thinking of too. Who is, uh, isn't it Nick from Rooted Leaf? And he is his name Nick, you know, rooted leaf I don't know him. the company. No. I know, uh, it, I know the company kind of, I've heard of it, but 
I'm in my own little bubble. I don't know him. Uh, Brandon Russ <laughs> talked a lot about that too. Yeah, a bunch yeah. of smart people talk a lot. Of yeah. Well, humic. Humic yeah. is a humic long chain of carbohydrates. And so carbon, that's what I'm saying, man. Carbon does so many amazing things. Um, and it has, because humic and fulvic are such diverse chains of carbohydrates, they're made up of, right, stabilized organic matter that has taken hundreds of years to natural in nature to break down to this point. And so fulvic is just a smaller molecule size than humic. It's just aged a little bit longer. Um, so like peat is really high in fulvic. Think about peat is like ancient bogs, ancient moss, um, coal, coal will be really high in fulvic. And then humic is going to be newer things like forest floor hummus, humus, <laughs> Thomas. Um, and then like compost, right? And so these are made up of what? Shit, carcasses, uh, or leaves. Like it's just a bunch of stuff that's made of carbon decomposing. Finally, it stabilizes and it has each chain is unique because every situation is unique, right? Not everything is breaking down at the same time in the same spot. So then you have, because of this, you have so many different molecules, uh, arrangements of carbon and you can have cation sites and anion sites. So you can, this is the world's natural best chelating agent. So F that EDTA, we got humic, we got fulvic, and that is going to be naturally chelating, super powerful and giving the those minerals little kind of like magnets little sites for them to attach to and then mm -hmm. your plant can take it right up and so when people say oh it's a carbon-based fertilizer i'm like well yeah like anything with humic and fulvic which most all organics that's what they use because that's the natural chelating agent for organics all right um, that's uh i'm glad uh, you get that perspective I haven't heard it spoke quite like that before uh yeah, humic and fulvic, guys. Uh, the way I always say it is uh, when you have a humic based, humate based fertilizer, it uh, coats everything in the root zone and allows the pH not to swing so significantly for the roots around the roots. And it allows the, the, uh, it's just like a, a, it keeps a more stable environment, right? For the uptake. It, the electrical conductivity in the, the root zone doesn't allow things more to react together first cancel things out right well it's just like it's it's going there and it's creating an attachment and a cation attack an ionic it's bond between whatever like i said a cation so positively charged would be like calcium magnesium or a uh an anion so a negatively charged it can bind with these different molecules and then it you it's soluble in water right so it goes up to the root zone it's right there and fulvic can actually okay. penetrate and go inside of the plant because it is such a tiny molecule size that's why fulvic foliar i'm all about the alliteration t tuesday foliar friday with the fulvic and it's going to get inside and actually penetrate and go into the stomata into the root cells humic is so too large to do that I'm getting yep. it now. So the humic and fulvic is instead of going, having the whole chemistry done by your local chemist, making your nutrients and uh, using iron as a chelator. And so that you get quick up, uptake, you're using humic and fulvic, which will make everything that way inevitably when it's in the root zone. So yeah, it's like a little chemistry. This is this is why Spartan Grown comes up here and he's like, I don't understand Synganic. It makes no sense to me. But when I understand what he's saying though, because it doesn't, when you get down to the brass tacks <laughs> about some things, like why wouldn't you just go fully organic? Like, yeah. why are you here in between? Yeah, when you're like, adding salts, you're canceling out 50% or more of the available nutrients that could possibly be there. Well, and like there's something, another thing, the soil doctor, I, my interview with him yesterday was just amazing. He's a wealth of knowledge. If you guys don't follow him on Instagram or YouTube, he's great. But he told me something that was pretty interesting. And that was um, 
we were talking about phosphorus because I was thinking, you know, the world right now, our um, like climate committee or whatever, um, they're saying that our soils have um, 60 harvests left of phosphorus within them. And mm. um, yeah. that's like 60 years, right? If we don't yeah. take care of our soils, what are we going to do? Um, but if, when we use like salt based nutrients like phosphates, um whoa what that's a weird video of me i wonder what that is <laughs> <laughs> i'm like what is remediation four weeks ago oh, okay. so okay. what was it what was your podcast under podcasts oh it's not no it's not it, we record it and then i cut it up i chop it up into sun oh, okay. stories so it's like oh, a documentary okay. style where i'm narrating the story and then i put in excerpts from my guests. So I've got like Jorge Cervantes and Jeff Lowenfels and Tom Rakes of Seedsman and um, all, all kinds of people. So the soil doctor, my interview was with him yesterday and that'll be cut up in um, a couple of episodes. Yeah, so I, pull, I pulled up immediately to your page and was trying to find it. <laughs> oh yeah. He's, he's, he's great. So what he told me that was just kind of like a, a aha moment was that when we're using, cause I was like, well, you know, maybe salt based for phosphorus, if you need it like instantly, I guess. And you're, I, I don't know, like there is no reason that you really need that phosphorus instantly. Um, but if you add too much phosphorus to your soil, then the mycorrhizal fungi, which does a really amazing job in nature, mycorrhizal fungi is what solubilizes phosphorus for plants in nature. Like that's what 90% of all plants have a relationship with a particular strain of mycorrhizal fungus, fungus. And that's its job is to solubilize phosphorus and make it available for the plants from the soil. And so when you add too much phosphorus, though, that's already solubilized and ready to be accessed, the mycorrhizal fungi doesn't establish there because it's like, hey, you've already done the job for me. So I'm, there's no reason the, the purpose of my life in this moment is really to solubilize that phosphorus. But if it's already there, then I'm not going to establish. And so he told me that piece and I was like, wow, because I know that, you know, that it's like its role in nature is to do this. And so it's like an inverse relationship where it's not needed. And it was really profound because, you know, mushrooms are the collective consciousness of the earth, really. Uh, man, this is crazy. I'm just thinking of the conversations we have with, uh, sorry, cover my mouth. Uh, uh, Tico Biosupply. They make uh, microorganisms that are uh, special organism blends for certain things. So then they have a blend that's for phosphorus. They have a blend for nitrogen. They have a mega blend for all of it. Like they have these specific uh, strains that do very well at certain things. So I was thinking about that for like an organic grower, somebody who's having problems. Like, why wouldn't you just go get the strain of microorganism you need and see if your soil already has what you need? You just don't have microorganisms that are, uh, you know, available. Uh, making yeah. available. Is that something you could do or does that not make sense? Yeah, definitely. I'm all about buying microbes for specific purposes, but nest, but typically I think of that more for like um, manufactured engineered potting mixes because okay. in nature, microorganisms are everywhere. And if you give them a food source or a job and you set up the habitat, how they like it, they will come. Um, they're okay. ubiquitous across the world. But if you do have to purchase, I buy microbes for IPM purposes mostly so like what do you buy? uh bacillus thuringiensis yep. right it's bt okay. so my yep. caterpillars um then uh usually just like monterey the cheapest okay. organic like i don't buy i don't subscribe to pay that green tax freaking <laughs> for marketing um and then man i push this guy and he just ignores me i don't understand we we talked on the phone i thought it was like this great conversation <laughs> and he was like gonna make me a custom micro blend he has this company in florida called custom biologicals and i have been promoting his products for like five or six years and no then sponsorship he just ghosted nothing. me no, he just ghosted me. I was going to pay for it. I like, there was no, I wasn't asking for nothing. I was like, dude, 
you got you make the best microbes i buy them i i tell the people to buy it because it's like 30 dollars to treat two and a half hectares of land it's like uh -huh that's like 10 acres or something like yeah. in the in the same little bottle of the same exact microbes that like maybe mammoth pea would be making for what eighty dollars for a, what a couple hundred gallons of water and then i'm like this guy has thousands and thousands and thousands of gallons of water so i'm always pushing his stuff <laughs> and we had this amazing conversation. I told him how much I loved him. <laughs> and then he ghosted me and never answered my emails, my calls, texts. He, he, like, he must he must uh he must have a girl in his life that is a little uptight or something. Like, hey, he's 65. I mean, it's not like he's like old. I don't get it. I wasn't trying to like come on to him. I really appreciate what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey maybe he had a heart attack or something you know, you know no get this he reached out to me on linkedin like on accident i was like That's hey random. i see that we're in the same <laughs> industry and i'd like to see, would you like to try my products and i was like oh hey dude it's me remember <laughs> Ghost. Ghost. <laughs> yes and then no response exactly. and so then i went on his website and i bought something else and in the notes i was like <laughs> Hey man, you want to send me that, you know, that blend of the trichoderma and the bacillus on that sugar that we talked about that one time? It's me. And then he never sent me my order and he just refunded me the money. Oh I my like, God. Oh, I know. It's wow. So weird. I think I'm maybe just a he doesn't do it no more. Intense. Oh, oh, he, he does. Him off somehow. <laughs> she said, no, I've been watching. He does. I done got yeah. some in a roundabout way. He probably already got some in a roundabout way. God, yeah, hey, I need I you to go to holler at this count. guy for me. Exactly. <laughs> I know this plug on these on this strain that I'm trying to get. Dude, he it actually he did the same thing to um mike the microbe man who does the microbial products for grassroots living soil brand so i talked to him and i bought some insect frass and chitin from the guy who develops the products for grassroots and i was like yo do you have a hookup on trichoderma blend and he's like no i used to get it from this guy in florida but he ghosted me i was like what he did the same thing to me i'm like what is wrong with this guy God, I think maybe he's like a maybe he's just something. a scammer. Maybe he's just a scammer, has a cool thing going on, and scams a lot of people, and then realized that he was fucking with some real people, and was like, eh, I'm not no, gonna go there. I don't, because even Mike was like, it was the best trichoderma product I've ever like, I've ever gotten, and I used it. I use it for botrytis. I use it for just a foliar spray through flower and. So weird. It's like, what? I, my thought was that it was like maybe because we were going to create products with it uh, that he was. But he offers oh, white labeling. He offers so white weird. labeling. So it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's so weird. Yeah. We oh, that's, that is weird. So white labeling is when people allow you to rebrand something. So if he's mm -hmm. offering that, why would he get weirded out? So weird. If that's one of his business models. Yeah, it's just weird I don't know. Stuff like that. It is that really, crazy. really strange. But I ended up freaking uh, Bigfoot Mycorrhiza came through for me and they got the blend of bacillus that I was looking for. So I bought a pound of bacillus on like sugar, I think, super fine sugar. And it's like five different strains of bacillus. So it's got the megatherium in there, which is good for solubilizing phosphorus. Um, and then... I haven't found a trichoderma blend on powder. I've only found liquid and I'm really trying to find powder that's local, not fucking India. Um, <laughs> you know, like yeah. I'm, I'm in the process of making a product called immunity. It's something that I use in my garden regularly. I'm always making it. And so I was just like, Oh, I'm going to make it easy product. And you know, we just have because I have yucca on my website. You can buy yucca from me. Um, uh, I'm trying to make things as cheap as possible because I that's my go to. It's like affordable. Um, and I know that some of the things that I use are, like you said, kind of over people's heads, maybe like. So if I put it into a product, 
then it's like, okay, just scoop and mix it up and then water it in. And then you don't have to think about, um, you know, like I grind fucking malted barley to make a fine flour that I then bubble in tea because of the enzymes that it has in there that are also solubilizing phosphorus, breaking down carbohydrates, um, all kinds of things. And I know that a lot of people aren't going to do that. So I was like, oh, I should make a product. I don't have enough to do already. So why not do that? Hell yeah, man. Umbrella Troll work. says, I've been looking for cheaper than raw MPK yucca. Oh, I got you, girl or guy. Yeah, um, yeah that's, a, that's Josh from Umbrella Trellis. He's been on here too. He's a real good guy. It's on your website. Yeah, yeah go know. check out my shop. I bought the fucking yucca. I bought 200 pounds of yucca, y'all. So I just had to move 150 pound bags of yucca today. I loaded them up in the truck. Um, and I have free samples too that you can grab. You just have to pay for shipping and enter the code. So I got four ounce size, one pound size. And um, I think like the raw Yucca and PK brand is two ounces for $30. And I'm doing four ounces for $19.99. Like wow. it's, it's insane that they can just charge it up. And I don't know other like powdered Yucca companies except for um, – raw and pk and i use yucca so much and i was like i'm not trying to uh you know like pay that much i don't think other people should so here i'll sell it i use it uh, that much that's awesome yes yeah, so some things you just need to provide a service and not make money on some people there's people in the industry literally don't understand that though there's a lot of people in the industry that don't yep. get that some things ain't all about money sometimes it's about the the culture of the whole situation yeah yeah, I mean, that's part of perm permaculture, man. I try to incorporate permaculture into my garden as well. And that's the, the idea that 10% of everything should go back, whether it's giving back to your garden, like the pests and the animals or your community, because the more we regenerate um, our communities, the more our lives are regenerated. And so it's a positive feedback loop. The more you put out good, the more good that's going to come back to you. And oh, yeah. that's like the vibe, man. Oh yeah, man, it's freaking awesome. I I, I love it, dude. It, it it inspires me. It inspires me to do better. It inspires me to be a better human. You know, people yeah, like thank you. you like, man. That's what's cool. So cool about the organic stuff is that it inspires you to do better for not not only you but the whole the whole world, man. It's, it's freaking awesome. Well, there's 8 billion of us. Imagine if we all just did a little bit better. Like, that would have a profound impact if yeah. we just, like, you know, fucking smoke a little weed together, quit arguing behind our keyboards, and, like, come out and actually connect in the community, in the real world, and do something positive for the other person, not because you're expecting something back in return, yeah. but just because, like... Yeah. A lot of people will counter it though. They'll be like, Well, I guarantee you drink out of plastic water bottles and blah 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 blah. But if you're doing something to do something better, you're impacting the environment in a certain way. It's just so difficult for like you know, people get road rage, right? This is a oh, yeah. symptom of not being connected with the person that you're upset with. Right. Like you, all you see is a car. You're not even, if it was a person standing in line and everybody's standing in line, you're not going to act all crazy like that. Like, you know, cause you're more connected to the individual. So like this, this is uh, being online is a whole nother thing where some people just get really lazy where they just don't accept people anymore. They're like, I don't accept that you're different than me. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta be like me. That's how some people are, which yeah. is well, we have this algorithm that creates an echo chamber of our ideals. And so we have this bias reinforcement all the time because our smart smartphones are always listening to us, know everything about our lives. And then they give us, they create a curated experience online that is specifically for our mind. And then it perpetuates the cycle. That's why I said, I live in a bubble because we all do, we're all in our own little bubble. And sometimes you have to pop it and see outside, step outside. And I think, like uh, multiple times, you know, people ask you, there's one thing that you could change about the world or whatever. I would say empathy, literally people having more empathy and being able to just step outside of your comfort zone, put yourself in someone else's shoes 
And that right there is going to leaps and bounds improve every situation, every relationship, everything in your life if you can just have a little bit more understanding. And the whole internet has made that very difficult because mm -hmm. people now see things exactly, you no, know, all of my friends see the same thing. We all believe this, so it must be true. And then also it takes that, like you said, that like that interaction mm -hmm. between one another away. And so I think that people are a lot meaner than they were pre-internet. Dude, like, you could say one thing on the internet and like you'll have your, your, a group of people that agree with you and you'll have 10,000 other people that are just talk shit about whatever you're saying just because they can talk shit. They don't even care what it means. They're just going to make fun of you no matter what you're doing because it's not what they're doing and they don't believe. You. Yeah, there's it it's only good. there's only a couple people on I've noticed online only a couple people in the YouTube community that really aren't about it almost everyone else is trying to connect everyone they're trying to help people you know what i mean but some some of the guys and then they bring out the worst in other people too you know yeah. like you might only have three people that interact with a whole community of people and they can make that whole community start to get upset and riled up so it's it's cool that you're organic and you're so uh, accepting of everyone else's style uh, it's, we don't get people like that on here every time some people are really organic and they hate on other people and they say it on here too that they don't oh, like man. other people there's a lot of people down in the comments right now um, we haven't been ignoring you uh, we've been watching you guys seeing you bobby panels uh says it's almost 420 fam it is it's almost 420 and uh if you guys stick around uh we got some shit to give away here tonight. Uh, oh yeah, when we're After done, the man. podcast, we're gonna give some stuff away. Yeah, so uh, if you guys want to stick around and uh, win some free beans, <laughs> we got some for you. You can yep. give away one of my yuccas. Oh yeah, nice. hell yeah. yeah! Just give here, me we'll the address of whoever there. wins. Let hell me get yeah. on this uh, real quick. Uh, Streamyard giveaway. So we were going to do a 420 giveaway tomorrow. Way too many people alive, though. But we have way too many people going on other panels and stuff. So we just figured uh, we would do it tonight, man. Uh, so whoever's up in here right now, uh, lucky, lucky night for you. <laughs> and we appreciate you, yeah, too, so for, mainly, for mainly showing just, up. Mainly we've just been giving away the wrench, right? A lot of people who follow our podcast – uh how, are growing this cross the wrench and uh um is that why there's there. wrenches next to people's names no so the wrench <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of no, cool though, wait, i give everybody a wrench because uh you can't click on all right so for instance this is a community and we're literally sitting in a room with a bunch of people some people broadcast and they don't feel that way but here, all the people who are in the chat, I'm constantly looking at all these people. I know almost every single one of these people in some way, some form, or I've talked to most of these people some way, some form, you know, and engaged in something with them. So they're not just like random people pulling up. So then when we're here, we're we're trying to communicate with people and stuff and uh, build. We're trying to build help each other. We're trying to sell products and shit on here. Like but what does the wrench thing. mean, though? Still, I'm still confused. So, so oh, sorry. I'm, I remember I took a bong hit earlier. All right. <laughs> I forget everything. Uh, the wrenches are for if you click on someone's name when they have a wrench, it allows you to go to their channel and you can subscribe to their channel. So then oh, if cool. you sub up to someone's channel, they're going to sub up to your channel. And everybody in the chat, if they sub up to each other, you build each other's channel. So. If you keep showing up to podcasts like this that do that, this is a community podcast where you build your own channel too. Uh, and if you just sub up to everybody, you're definitely going to get subs. And so all these people are in the community. These are all cannabis people in the community. Everybody, everybody down there is a moderator in our in our channel. So that's how you get the wrench. Is you we make you a moderator for the channel, and then you can you can click on. So anybody's name and go to their straight to their channel while while you're watching and sub to their channel. Just I recognize dope. a lot of the names. Well, not a lot of them, but some of the names like Django and Canaflex. What up? Um, uh, from 
just my channel and other you know things as well so that's cool i didn't even know about is that like a stream yard thing or is that a youtube thing no that's a youtube thing definitely oh, what's that i'm not about oh, yeah, the so the, yeah so i have my phone up uh also uh and i'm running uh that's how i do that okay you're not worried about like one time i tried to have a different youtube up and then it was like freaking like doing this crazy feedback loop with the sounds and i was like oh god oh, i gotta close out of it it was yeah, not you, great did you turn the volume all the way down <laughs> I, like i got my my computer going so the volume's all the way down on that so it don't get no echo but we do have actual moderators that watch so like if anybody gets crazy like you know Oh, that yeah. matter, though. that's not relevant here because it really is uh, if you come into the chat and you start talking crazy you're just gonna get blocked anyways like for <laughs> i look at it like this if you're coming to my house bro and you get to talking wild and acting crazy i promise you're gonna leave instantly like you're gonna instantly leave i'm not even gonna conversate with you please leave so it's yeah. like that you ain't no freedom of speech up here if you're acting crazy okay yeah, yeah I know, we don't man. we don't get no sex bots or nothing like that going on around here what <laughs> like oh, the yeah, sex yeah, yeah. bots and shit like come on now i was like what what are you talking about <laughs> what am i missing <laughs> <laughs> what am i missing now there's sex bots on here i know i'm like what what kind of channel is this? Yeah, cannabis. Has <laughs> come up everyone's oh my gosh. <laughs> Hey, so which yucca is this that you're willing to give away here? The the four ounce or the sixteen ounce? Four ounce? Yeah, let's see four ounce. Yeah, how much is the sixteen ounce? Let's see. That's a lot of yucca right there. So oh how much? God, you, how yeah. much? Uh, will how how long will a four ounce? Oh, uh, a bag long of time. Yucca, how much will a it long do? Long time. So it's like one. I believe one eighth of a teaspoon is three gallon for three gallons of water. Wow, that's a that's a so big. yeah. Galaxy Solutions asks: Is there a specific yucca plant that is most beneficial, or are they all created equal? Um. Well, I use yucca shitagera, which is a specific variety native to South, uh, the Southern America, Arizona. Actually, that's where I got all my yucca. Is Arizona? So, no um, yeah. <laughs> pretty cool i don't know if that That's is weird. superior or i was gonna ask good. that i was gonna ask that question because i've heard that before that like certain yuccas from different uh areas and climates and stuff are more are better than others but yeah I, I mean i don't know the difference guy that i get it from he produces a shitload of yucca and q Kuyaha, I don't know how to say it. Um, Kuyaha, yeah. <laughs> and so the properties of those two wedding agents, Yucca and Q, are incredibly similar, but Q is exorbitantly more expensive. And Yucca actually also contains indole acetic acid, which is a plant hormone that in promotes cell elongation. Um, and Q is used as an advocate or something. I can't say the word uh, in uh, vaccines for animals a lot. And so um, I think even human vaccines. So that's why Q is so much more expensive. Obviously, it's used wider application and you know the vaccines and then with everything that was going on with covid prices went crazy um and so i talked with him and he you know when i was picking out what product to buy because this is one of the ingredients in the immunity that i'm working on um he really was like this yucca shitagera is it's really great i sell it to he does he does like a lot of conventional agriculture like and i don't mean that as like salt based but like regular traditional farmers buy this not cannabis so um he said you know this it's american grown which is like super important to me i was trying to source everything in canada america or mexico and nothing from far away like just to keep it um local and yeah i mean it works great oh yeah we actually use yucca in our grow. Um, I do right now uh, with Simpro. Uh, they have yucca there in their lineup. Dude, shout out Simpro. Yeah, I mean, it's shout does so winner. many amazing things. Oh yeah, shout out to the winner. 
Good luck. Hopefully it's somebody who's not using it currently. Keep it hey, green. Keep it green. Okay. So how do you want them to reach you? Do you have an email? Or how yeah. do you want this? Or Alexandria. I can just... All right, here we go. What is it? Alexandria oh. at queenofthesungrown.com. There Yay. you go. Yeah. And then I have like an article that I wrote on my website all about yucca. And if you scan the QR code on the package of yucca, it'll take you to the article on my website so that you can learn all of the amazing properties of yucca. I spelled it wrong. <laughs> I didn't get the. <laughs> Hang on. That was not the right one. Like... All right. Alexandria at, at Queen, Queen of, of the Sun Drone. I don't know. What I should have put I Alex. Called. I don't know why I made it so complicated. I've just been trying to <laughs> sign my name as Alexandria on all of my professional things. And then I was like, God damn, that's a long fucking email. I wish I could change it. But I was like, <laughs> I can't change it now. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I get you. I, my, I have a long last name. And I made that my email on my first one. I'm like, why Dude. the hell would I do that? Alizin <laughs> Alexandria? <laughs> <laughs> the hell do I do? Uh, I quit. Somebody else do it. Where's Norma G at when you need him? <laughs> Norma G, he's in here somewhere. At least he was earlier. Okay, here, <laughs> let me try it again. A L E X A N D R I A, right? And then mm -hmm. Queen of the sungrown.com dot coma now i put z again <laughs> oh god dot coma <laughs> all That's right hilarious. um yeah shout, uh, thank you for staying so long uh yeah, of course. yeah we stayed like 11 minutes over kind of yeah we're gonna do some uh giveaways here it's totally up to you if you want to stick around or not we'll just do uh, one and you know then, you're uh, uh then i'm just gonna give people the option who want them to get them let's email me hell yeah that's what's up bro so the wrench uh you want to tell if someone's no i'm not gonna do all that you're gonna win it and you can holler at me later about uh, it i'm not gonna get into that whole conversation <laughs> if you know you know if you don't the wrench is some hde shit that, that's all i'm gonna tell you well just hashtag the wrench that's it yeah. Hashtag the wrench. And this will get you a pack of, of beans. But uh uh in the long in the just to finish up real quick, go to higher desert exotics.com or at <laughs> gmail.com. Oh my gosh. If you want to get your hands on the wrench, give me a good reason why you want it in the email. And then if I hit you back. I'll ask you for your information and you'll get them. If I don't hit you back, then your email wasn't, uh, you didn't convince me to send them to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Basically, oh, everybody's yeah. going to get them that sends me an email. Yeah. And then somebody's going to win them right now, too. That's funny. Hell yeah. So, but, uh, Alexandria, uh, do you have any uh, shout outs you want to give tonight? Um, I mean, yeah, just a uh, code stoner for any of my classes, 42% off. Please support, help me pay for this Stone, move. All man. right, so promo code S-T-O-N-E-R. -E -er. Yep, and, and that's guys. going live tomorrow, 420. Um, you know, if you want to sign up for Blaze, that's closing as well, and that's on Patreon. Um, anything, listen to Sungrown Stories, my new podcast. We're on episode six right now. And, um, you know, just follow, subscribe, like, share. I'm trying to spread the good word. And if you need anything, you have questions about anything, I'm always open. Send uh, People say don't DM me. DM me. Send me your questions. Send me your pictures. I love it. I love helping people. So get uh, at me. Um, I'm not, you know, I apologize if it takes me a while. I Because I do say that. I have lots of messages. But I try to get through and help you out however I can. Um, keep it growing. You know what I mean? Like, let's all, the more you know, the more you grow. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we're glad you're out here putting in the work, man. And then I like the name, Queen of the Sun Grown. I mean, I was thinking about it earlier. I was like, man, that's a, that's just 
that's like the top tier name right there. You don't get no better than that. You can't even walk around other chicks without being like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the funny thing about that is that I started out as Queen of the Sun, and it was in ode to the plant, and that I, the plant, was the Queen of the Sun, right? Because yeah. this plant can do everything from producing food for us and our animals to building materials to clothing us to paper to everything, our medicine. And um, I think that it it's a sacred plant that was in the garden of Eden, that there is a reason that is here and we are to tend it. And I was like, very like, it was about the plant, but then there's this documentary called queen of the sun and it's about bees. And I couldn't get any of Ooh. the website name, the Instagram, the anything because it's queen of the sun, which hell yeah. Shout out to the bees, man. Um, right. so then I was like, okay, I'm going to just tweak it to queen of the sun grown because I'm trying to promote outdoor growing. But then people just thought that that was, they would be like, oh, that's you queen of the sun grown. Hey queen, what's up? And I'm like, no, that's my company. That's my business. I am not the entity on the internet. That's I'm Alex y'all, <laughs> but, um, we live in the world of handles. So I'm just, I hope that I can, um, you know try to steward the plant and represent her as much as I can with a name like that. You said y'all. <laughs> I say y'all all the time. <laughs> I, hey, it's I a love good one. the South. Elizabeth. Hey, shout out to Elizabeth. Hell yeah. Congratulations. You got some fire beans. That's for yep, sure. Just hit me up at uh, Higher Desert Exotics at gmail.com. It's higher, H-I-G-H-E-R. And then uh, I got you. Hell yeah. But thanks for coming. This was really fun. We appreciate your time. Yeah, um, of course. We'll go ahead and sign off here. Everybody go sub up to Queen of the Sun Grown and uh, check out her podcast on YouTube. I already put in the links. And um, definitely go. And it's on everything. Up. Spotify, Apple, wherever you listen to podcasts, it's on all of the things. So you don't have to mm. just put it on YouTube. It's yeah, definitely YouTube. check out uh, check that. out her promotional stuff. She got's going for four twenty. Man, killer deals, killer deals on everything. Check it out. Um, we thank you guys all. And if you want a pack of the uh, summer in the ranch, uh, just hit up Creative at the email provided. And, uh, give them a description why you want them so much. <laughs> We'll get those out to you. All right, guys. Cool. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming yeah. on. And thank you guys for all for showing up tonight. We appreciate you for sure. Yep. Happy Later. 420. Happy 420 and 419 bicycle day today. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> good job, Smash. <laughs> all right. Bye. Good night, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> What is in this stuff?